So, all right, we got a fucking special guest today. We haven't had a guest in a while because we ran out of fucking cool people to interview. <laughs> 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 but uh, our dude Sage is on the show today. Sage, what's going on? What is up, Alex? How are you doing, man? Fine, dude. Thanks for having and me. He's not like Sage. He said we ran out of cool people. You're really cool because you could probably kick everyone that's previously been on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> so <laughs> and he's still pretty bad. sick, but yeah, Sage is fucking gnarly. Mini Joe Rogan. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, dude. Or maybe Sorry. bigger. I don't know. Never seen Joe Rogan. So never seen bigger. a person. And Sage could also be fucking twenty five or forty five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, welcome to the show. Um, Sage has his own podcast that he just started called Sage the Rage, which you can find on Spotify. And are you on Apple yet? Uh, I, I'm not sure to be honest. Okay. I'm still uh, still I'm new Figured to this whole out. entrepreneur thing. I listen and, to it on Spotify, so okay, I cool. know it's on there. I know it's on Anchor. That's who I put it through. Yeah. And then Perfect. I don't know who they if I'm on iTunes yet or what the deal is. Yeah. So I'm still messing with it, but cool. Yeah. Look yeah, for so uh, Sage's uh first episode is is super good. Um he has like a crazy story. You're only twenty six, right? Yeah, twenty six. So, <laughs> um like been through a lot of shit already at twenty six, which is pretty crazy. Um, so if you want, you don't have to go through your whole story like you did. Cause they can, they can listen to your podcast for, it's like 30 minutes long yeah. for the, the whole story. But if you want to give, um, kind of a, uh, abbreviated version of that, go ahead. So the listeners know who you are, what you do, yeah. where you're from, that type of shit. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Sage Bachelor and, uh, born and raised in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And don't look at the camera. Look at you guys. Wherever yes, you just want look wherever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. That's for the people on YouTube. So if you're watching, this yeah, is check. love for you guys. You right know? on. Some cool. people watch. Fair enough. Some people just listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, Sage. Go no, ahead. no, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, so born and raised right outside Albuquerque. Um, was homeschooled growing up and uh, joined the Navy right out at 18. Went off to be a uh, went off to be a Navy SEAL, but I ended oh, up breaking, uh, breaking my leg about seven or eight months into training. And then... Um, you know, at the time, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I had all these hopes and dreams of being a Navy SEAL, you know. And I know you guys are new the, newer to the CrossFit community, right? Yeah. Yeah, you guys started a few months ago. Just like a year. Oh, a year ago. Yeah, yeah. so I, I mean, I've been in CrossFit since I was like 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I, you know, I was part of the CrossFit community going into the uh, – to the SEAL training and, and, you know, I was really strong candidate, but just, you know, your body doesn't hold up when you're 18, you know, your bones are fragile. So ended up getting out and going back home and got on as a wildland firefighter when I w went back home. In New Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. In New Mexico. So did that for a season. And then, um, I was, well, I was almost 20, 19, 20 at the time. That's when I started cage fighting. Gnarly. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What made you want to start? Like, did someone bring you along? or? Well, so I had always been super involved in martial arts since I was a little kid. Oh. So, I mean, starting off at like six, you know, I was obsessed with Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee and all these great martial artists. And that's when kind of UFC started kind of taking off when I was like 10, 12. And, you know, I just, I started watching The Ultimate Fighter. And, you know, mm -hmm. Albuquerque is the mecca. It's the mecca oh, for really? MMA. You know, it's Jackson's MMA. That's where John Jones and Diego Sanchez and Whoa. all these, you know, all the old school guys came out. Holly Holmes is out of there. John Dobson, you know. So it's like, it's Whoa. a place to be if you're going to be an MMA fighter. Right. And so started training on, on when I was young. And I'd, um, I trained with the guys at Jackson's. So, you know, 18 training with, like, UFC fighters was, was really cool. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And then, you know, I was like, well, I got to give it a shot. And after, um, you know, I was like, you know, after five fights and then just realizing how hard it is on your body, you know, after you get thumped a couple times, you're like, God dang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, this isn't worth it, you know? Like, I'm sure it's like when you crash on a dirt bike, you're like, God. Man, you know, <laughs> dude, I've never yeah. even been in a fight. Yeah, <laughs> My, most of people have it. It's a crazy thing, you know. And mm -hmm. you get you get locked in this cage <coughs> with another human being that's been training to kick your ass, like training to kill you, you know. And you're just like, you know, it, it's like so many levels to fighting, like you know, just like anything. So, oh, but that's crazy. You know, man. I think it's truly. I mean, why I want to do it is I think it's truly the purest sport. You know, yeah. like what's more raw and you know pure than getting in a cage and you know <laughs> seeing who comes out. You know, the winner. That's crazy. Yeah, but you know, like I said, man, I, I had friends that were way more talented than me, and you know, one guy I remember he got a concussion just training, just training. Actually, it was Diego Sanchez, um, and he head kicked him, and the guy had a brain bleed in his head, 
And then after that, he was like, can't fight, you know? It was just like, I was like, okay, this is not, no yeah. <laughs> I'm not that good, you know? I'm, yeah. I'm good for my age, but I'm not, you know? <laughs> not I'm not gonna, Yeah, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not going to be a Conor McGregor over here. Have you fought, um, like, what's your highest, like, pro- are you professional? What would you say? So, yeah, I, would, I would fought at pro level. Yeah, okay. one fight in Mexico. So I don't know if I'm technically pro in the U.S. Oh, okay. But I had one pro fight. I had four amateur fights. I was 4-0. Wow. And then they're all first round submissions. I mean, I never fought anyone like, you know, crazy good or anything, uh-huh. but, um, you know, and then I had one professional fight out in Juarez, Mexico when I was freaking 19 <laughs> years old. <laughs> what the fuck? How'd you get that? <laughs> yeah. I honestly, my, uh, my coach, Chris Luttrell, he owns the uh, Luttrell's down in, um, down in Mexico and he's partnered with Jackson's or was, they started together, but he broke off and started his own gym. Yeah. And he just called me. He's like, Hey, you want to? You want to fight in Mexico? What is? They're paying eight hundred bucks. I was like, yeah. He's <laughs> like, yeah. We'll put you, put you up in a room for a couple days. You know, you get per diem. Oh man, it was it was awesome. That's cool. Yeah, we were like celebrities down there because like nothing goes to Juarez, you know. Uh, so we're a bunch of American fighters down there, you know. Yeah. But we beat them. We ended up beating the Mexicans so bad they're just like, hey, you guys like, they'd get to the second round like. We can't beat them this bad, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they paid you eight hundred bucks, like no matter what, win or lose. No, I think it was just for win. Oh, I okay. think yeah, win. I think four hundred bucks a show. Yeah, you know, eight hundred win, something like that. So okay. yeah, and uh, his name is Joaquin. The guy I fought. We're still friends on Facebook. So Whoa, nice. <laughs> yeah. he's a cool dude. Yeah. He still live down there. Do you, uh, yeah, I think so. I think he still does. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he went down there for your first fight. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so nuts. So do you keep up with the fighting nowadays? And you stuff? know, I really don't. I kind of. Fell out of it. The only fight I really keep up on is like McGregor, uh-huh. uh, John Jones. I, I keep up on Holly Holmes because you know right. she's a homegirl for sure. She's from my hometown. So, um, but you know there was just so many people coming in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, I just yeah. kind of lost interest in it. I mm-hmm. guess seems like no one stays on top for too long. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> the UFC. Anymore. That's what's wild to me about it is like you got to fucking be like fully committed to even do it. Like oh, it seems yeah. like you can't be like. Oh, I'm gonna fucking try to do photo video and like you figure out you suck and then you're like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you gotta like fucking fight someone. Yeah. Like, for yeah. Real. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you can't it, just like do the yeah. training, like the workout part and then not fight. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. And you think about, you know, like what's the worst case scenario if you, you know, sign up for a volleyball game and you don't train hard for it? Like you lose. What's the worst case scenario on a fight? You fucking you get, your ass, you, dude. <laughs> yeah. you get so, your ass handed yeah, to you, dude. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. You have to put, you have to dedicate a lot of time to yeah. training because yeah. it's not like you know, oh, you just get, you just lose. It's like, no, if you lose, you got your ass kicked. Right. <laughs> you know, dude. 